keeping with the tradition, I would like to use lacquer. And originally I was going to use tone oil finish, but I want to keep this pretty historically accurate. So I'm going to use brushing lacquer. First thing I want to do is go ahead and get this, uh, get this bottom trim stained up so it can start drying because it's going to take a while. And because there's going to be a fan blowing, the doors are open, the windows are open, and I'm going to be wearing a respirator, I'll just have to do like I did during the rest of the other two videos and just kind of check in with you because uh, the brushing lacquer and oil and all that stuff is really strong and I don't feel like dealing with a headache today, so I'll be wearing my mask as much as possible. So we'll come back in and check in here shortly. Real quick, I just wanted to talk about what I'm doing right here on these repair pieces. I've taken some golden mahogany and applied it over the patch in the spliced in piece here and I kind of brought the stain, the red mahogany up onto the original piece and just kind of blotted it around in a random fashion trying to blend down into this color i don't know if it's going to work but it seems like the camera's really not picking it up it's still showing a pretty good difference but it seems like this color is matching this better than it was before i put the golden mahogany on there so i think that's going to help out i've done it on the little tip over here and it may take a couple of tries going back and forth with different color stains to try and hide this until I get to the uh, full opacity or the full coverage of the dark walnut. So I'm now I'm going to start putting the dark walnut on all the way around. This is about as close as I could possibly get this patch to actually match the color of whatever this species of wood that was already on here. My small patch, I'll show you that here in a second, actually matched better than this one. Um, but I think it looks okay and once it gets uh, some finish on it, it'll just kind of, kind of hopefully all melt it in together. But what I did was I took red mahogany put red mahogany on, um, excuse me, golden mahogany on first, and then I did a light uh, scrub with some red mahogany to kind of warm it up. And then I came over the top of that with probably three passes of this dark walnut. And it the, the only problem with doing it that way is that the wood grain had already Kind of filled up and didn't want to accept any more stain and because it's kind of a trial and error type deal you know you, I, I don't know the proper way to do this so i'm just kind of feeling my way in the, around in the dark and going off previous experiences but i think that this is going to be okay i think it looks pretty decent and um, just got to wait for this to set up and dry and then hopefully here in a little bit i'll be able to put some masking around the bottom of it and start uh, lacquer, putting lacquer on the rest of the chest so I can let this set up for a few days and know that this is going to be nice and dry and then the lacquer dries really fast so that's why I want to go ahead and kind of get that going and this is going to take a while so it kind of works out. Real quick, here's a shot of the small patch. You can kind of see that little line. That really worked out. That, that really worked out good. I'm really pleased with that. I'm, I'm surprised that it took the color as good as it did. And it just looks like it's got a tiny little crack running through it. So I'm okay with that. This is a little more visible, but I, I feel like 
I just need to leave it alone. So let's go on to the next step. So with this, unlike James Bond, you don't want to shake this, you want to stir it. You want to stir it thoroughly and get all that resin and all that crap up off the bottom and get it suspended into the lacquer. And the cool thing about lacquer is if you have a half a can and it and it starts gumming up and kicking off on you and you need to and you need to use what's left in there, just add a little lacquer thinner to it until it gets to the consistency that you want to use, uh, use to brush it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this stirred up and start carefully brushing this on. Also, a word of caution. Make sure that you do this in a well-ventilated area with a fan blowing kind of cross draft. You gotta be careful with the whole fan thing because you might throw some dust into your workpiece. So just kind of make sure that it's pointed away from you and maybe pulling air from a window on one end of the building and going out the big door in the other end. You don't wanna let this these fumes accumulate in your shop and you damn sure don't want to be breathing it in so make sure you use a good respirator that's good uh that's that has filters for vocs uh volatile organic compounds and make sure that your just make sure that your filters just aren't dust filters make sure that they're good for volatile organic compounds vocs Let this get nice and dry. It's, uh, I went on with really thin coats, a really thin first coat. And so now I'm gonna take some 400 and sand all this out really lightly, wrapped around a soft foam block. Sand all my surfaces and uh, get it cleaned up and ready for the next coat. This right here is what I'm looking for. It's just a fine powder. I'm using 400 grit uh, Diablo sand net. I, I know you can wet sand this stuff, but um, I don't know. I'm just a little, a little leery about wet sanding this old wood and causing something to swell or getting water where I don't want it to. So I'm for, for this stage, 
we're going to stick with dry sanding and this you can you can see it just comes right out and you just take and blow it out with the hose and you get this fine dust and you can just really run your hand around it and feel that you got a really powdery smooth surface i don't know i don't know if that's right i'm sure there's some woodworkers out there possibly watching this video and just getting just laughing their butts off but i feel like this is turning out pretty good and i'm really excited and can't wait to get the next coat of lacquer on it so i'm gonna get it cleaned up wipe it down with some uh with some mineral spirits get all this dust off of it probably even use the shop vac to pull all this up so i don't just blow it all over the shop and get ready to put the second coat on So I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's a slight haze from rubbing in the actual Johnson's Paste Wax with the 4 alt steel wool. So if you can't really tell, then you'll have to take my word for it that there's like a hazy cloud everywhere I rubbed in this Paste Wax. 
and I've let it sit for, I don't know, maybe two hours. And it's, it's still like there's some areas where it kind of was heavy, like in the creases, and I'll have to get that out, and that's still kind of wet. But I'm just going to – I really, I don't have any clean, lint-free towels, so I'm just going to use this old shirt. It's really soft. And, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go around and start rubbing it out and see if you can – tell the difference as I work around the top of this lid and I'm using moderate pressure and just really making sure that I overlap my circles and you'll feel it kind of dragging and you can see the the, the dried paste wax and the, the dust from the lacquer coming up off of there so you can just move it to another spot, get you a fresh spot on the shirt whenever it starts kind of dragging. And just work your way around using moderate pressure, making sure that you get all of these hazy, foggy looking areas nice and rubbed out. All right, what do y'all think? Does it look great or does it look great? I'm completely satisfied with the way this project has turned out and it's all ready to go. I didn't film the last few um, hours of the process of me rubbing this thing out because it's just long and boring and absolutely pointless. All you're doing is polishing this finish back up with a clean, lint-free cloth. This is a shirt, it worked just fine. But I do want to discuss a mistake that I made and hopefully you can learn from my mistake so that if you ever tackle a project like this, you'll know to avoid doing what I did. On the top of the lid, I, was, I had already went over the entire surface of the lid first with a dry 4 aught steel wool pad. While I was doing that, I was following the grain just like I sanded it from bare wood all the way up through the coats of lacquer. I sanded everything on this chest in the same direction each time I sanded it. Well, for whatever reason, I decided that it would be okay to make small circular patterns and massage this stuff into this finish with this wool pad. That's really not that big of a deal but I went way too heavy handed whenever I did that and after I removed all of the hazed over dry Johnson's paste wax I could look in certain lights and see these tiny little swirl marks where I had massaged the surface with this wool pad this steel wool pad and the Johnson's paste wax which was Really stupid because if I feel like if I would have just followed the grain, it would have been fine and I wouldn't have to have done what I had to do to fix it. So in order to fix it, I hopped up there on top of the table, I grabbed my polishing wheel and this fine cut cleaner and I put a few drops on a wool pad and I just started going back and forth and watching my progress, being careful to keep the machine moving at all times, not sitting in one spot so I didn't burn through the lacquer. And as I was erasing each of those little areas that had the little swirl marks, I would just move on and, and making sure not to catch a corner or anything like that, just being real careful. After I would got all my little swirl scratches out, I came back, cleaned off the residue from the fine cut cleaner, and reapplied Johnson's Paste Wax to the entire surface and buffed it back out again. And it was like the little swirl scratch marks were never there. It worked out great. That could have been really disastrous. And what you do at this point, after you get your final coat of lacquer on, can either make or break your project. So be extremely careful, do your research, and know your materials. 
Guys, I really hope y'all enjoyed this process and this, this particular project. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. It was really challenging and took a lot of hours, but it, it's, it was all worth it. It was all worth it. And if you have any input or ideas or ways that I could have done this that would have been easier or better, I would please let me know down in the comment section. I'm always wanting to learn. I always want to learn something new. So I mostly just work off of instinct and prior experiences and I'm not really methodical. I just go with what I feel in my gut. So I'm sure there's a lot of things that people would have seen me doing in this process, this project that would make some people want to laugh and turn my hit the thumbs down button. But I feel like the way I did this particular chest, I left all of the original character that was already present on this, this piece here and it still looks like it has lived a long life. It doesn't look brand new. It doesn't look like it just come off the, fa the factory assembly line. It looks like every, every crack and every chip and every little thing that's wrong with it is supposed to be there. And I always want to try and leave that character and that soul in the piece that I, that I bring back to life. And some may say that's the easy way to do it. But leaving these defects on a piece in such a way that it doesn't look like you just half-assed it, there does, it does take some thinking. It takes some thought. And, and you've got to have an idea in mind, a picture of what you want this piece to look like. And ultimately, it was also a, a, a big deal that the customer wanted to leave some of these defects in here because each one of these nicks and one of these little chips is a memory because... People grow up around stuff like this, and they can tell you, oh, I stubbed my toe when I was five years old on this thing, or, uh, you know, I came in one night and all the lights was off and I tripped over it and it knocked this piece of trim off. You know, so there's a lot of memory and a lot of soul and spirit in these old pieces, and I want to try and leave that. So, if you would, hit the like button if you enjoyed these, these videos, this, these past few videos. I haven't had a call to action in any of them because I'm kind of a bonehead and I really just suck at YouTube, but I really would like for y'all to hit that like button and it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe to my channel. Every, every time I get a person subscribed to my channel or leaves a, 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 a uplifting comment or hits, a, hits that like button, it just makes me want to do more and better videos. I'm not trying to make money off of this stuff. I really enjoy inspiring people to get out there and get dirty, get your hands dirty, get, get out there and do something, make something, you know? Fix something. I, I want to inspire people and let you know that you don't have to be a genius to get out here and just try stuff out and, and be successful. You don't have to hire somebody to do everything that you need done. And I feel like the sense of satisfaction that a person gets after they have a successful project through all the ups and the downs that whenever they have a beautiful piece like this at the end of it, all of those troubles and all that hard work and, and tired tired back and tired feet and all that is all worth it. So I want y'all to come back and see the next few videos that I have coming out. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Y'all stay safe. Y'all come back now. Boom.